Hello everybody, it's not tortilla talk time. It might look like it, but it's not. It's 7.30 at night and I'm just now vlogging for the first time. I did too much today and I totally didn't listen to my body and was an idiot. Yesterday I filmed all day for the baby nursery and that wore me out. And then I woke up early for physical therapy and then I went all around town, meaning two stores, with Corey looking at Christmas decorations because I'm allowed to decorate early for Christmas, but it can't be super glittery because Eric does, he's like, I'm sick of vacuuming up glitter. I don't want to walk on the glitter I don't glitter all over the house just can we do no glitter and so I'm trying to get Christmas decorations that don't have glitter which is very hard for me but obviously I'm willing to do it so Corey and I went shopping for Christmas stuff today which was super fun but I didn't film any of it that was literally all I did but I walked around a Christmas store and a craft store and I was like hurting by the end it was like maybe an hour or two total of walking around my feet were in pain my legs felt they're about to give out I was like well we gotta go home so we get home sit down on the couch and I'm just literally sitting on the couch and fell asleep which is so not something I ever do. Eric was like cooking food and Flynn was running around talking and yelling and singing and being cuckoo head. With all that commotion, I just was literally sitting on the couch, fell asleep. It was so weird. So I pushed myself a little too hard, I guess, because my body just like shut down. And now I'm really tired. <laughs> And it's 7.30 and I have not vlogged anything except for right when I woke up from my nap. Flynn was right there and was like, Mama, want me in the grocery store with me? And so we played grocery store and I filmed a little bit of that. Can I buy this dump truck, please? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. How much is it? Two dollars. Here's two dollars. Here you go. And I have to get you money. What's my change? Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, you can put it with the walnut or Okay. Um, can I buy this jet ski, please? Oh, yeah. How much is it? Two dollars. Here you go. Thank you. Hi, Captain Turban. Hi. You're in a precarious predicament. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. See you later. See you later. Yeah, I didn't vlog anything today, so I apologize. But I had to clarify something. <laughs> I went on Twitter tonight, and I didn't upload a vlog yesterday because we were too busy filming the nursery room stuff. And then today, I was busy most of the day, and then I fell asleep, so I'm very late uploading the vlog right now. So I saw some tweets, and they're like, oh my god, I think Colleen's in labor. <laughs> I am not in labor. I am not in labor. I'm just getting more and more pregnant, and it's gonna be harder and harder for me to be uploading every single day. I want to, and I see comments sometimes that are like, just take a break. I don't really want to take a break. Like I like uploading vlogs. I like vlogging every day. It's really fun for me. And I love seeing your comments. It's like a huge reason how I'm getting through this pregnancy is like reading all your comments and feeling the love and support and finding a community of women, twin moms and moms who have been through the same symptoms as me. I, it's what's getting me through this pregnancy. So like, I don't want to stop doing this. I don't think that's the solution. I think I'm just letting you know that like, you're going to have to be patient. There are going to be days where I don't vlog and there's going to be days where things don't go up but I'll always try to remember to tweet or post on Instagram like, hey, no vlog today. But people definitely thought I was in labor. <laughs> I'm not in labor. Very much not in labor. Hopefully I won't go into labor for a while. We'll see. But I'm hoping that that's not happening anytime soon. Okay, so I'm gonna do you guys. The nursery is not done. It's still just a guest room. We just did like the before footage yesterday, but look what we did do. <gasps> oh my goodness, it's happening. How real does it make it? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, this is the only time you'll ever see my baby clothes hung up because once they're born, they're just gonna be in a pile on the floor. I put some of the baby products that I've got ready to go, a dog a tot up here. I have to obviously take everything out of the packages and like organize everything. Um, it's just where it went right now while we were filming and figuring things out. But look at these, it's a cute little, and I, I put them in order of like matching because <laughs> I'm that mom right now. Um, I'm just so obsessed. Like, oh my gosh, you guys. I was, I tied these so early on in my pregnancy. I didn't even know what the sexes were at that point. And everything's like blue and pink, which is kind of annoying, but um, sun shines, purple, blue. Oh my God. Like, look at all these cute baby clothes. I'm just so obsessed. Look at ice cream. <laughs> I just love it all so much. And like, this is only fruit fruit dress I bought for the little girl so far. It's hard because, no offense, but there's way better clothes for girls than there is for boys. Like for some reason, everyone's like so scared to dress little baby boys like cute and fun and colorful. For some reason that like freaks people out. And so like boy clothes are like blue. 
and gray and green and that's it. So I found a book. I don't know that I've ever read this to you guys. I don't even know that I've ever even read it. I like to journal when I'm on tours, when I'm doing something big and exciting in my life. And I toured and went on book tour and like all the stuff when I was pregnant with Flynn. And when we were cleaning out this room, I found a journal I wrote to Flynn, like to give to him someday. And I don't remember the last time I even looked through this. So I thought I could do that with you guys right now. I'm so excited to read through it. Okay, so the first thing is these pictures. And so I say like you and me and Uncle Corey at my book signing and then you and me on live with Kelly and Ryan and then you and me on Stephen Colbert. So I was pregnant during all those things. So this is July 15th, 2018. Hello, my little love. I'm not quite sure what to say. I've never written a letter to my unborn child before. I'm nervous. I hope you like me. I already love you so much. <laughs> This Colleen in 2018, she has no idea. She has no idea how cool Flynn's gonna be, oh my God. You're currently on tour with me and you've been behaving so far, thank you for that. You haven't made me barf or faint on stage yet. You're the best, but you did make me barf a lot right before I did my book signing in New York City and before I did the Stephen Colbert show last week. I'm gonna have your dad talk to you about that. Not cool, little dude. So far on this bus tour, we have performed in New Jersey, Buffalo, Albany, and Syracuse. I hope you're having fun in my tummy while I bounce around on stage like an idiot. I love you, love mommy. Oh my my gosh. Hi my little love. I miss your daddy so much. I don't like being on tour without him. He's shooting a movie in Colorado right now, but he will come join us on tour in four days. Yay. I hope you look exactly like him because he is my favorite face in the whole world. So if you look like him, I will just melt. He looks exactly like him. And then I put this in here, which is like a uh, article from, or like a page of People Magazine, I guess. It says, this is your first time in a magazine. You're so famous. <laughs> this is from People Magazine, July 16th, 2018. We're driving to Pennsylvania right now. Excited to get back on stage with you. Your ears started working this week. So you can hear me performing now. I'm sure it's a lot to take in. I love you, love money. Now I feel like a bad mom because I haven't been doing this for the twins. <laughs> Maybe I just start writing to them, but I don't know. I know I feel so bad. I did this for Flynn, but I didn't do this for them. I forgot that I did this for Flynn. I said, we only have three shows left on tour and then I get to go home. I can feel you kicking around now and I think you're homesick too. You're making me fart a lot, which makes me laugh. So thanks for that. Your grandpa uh, came on tour today. I'm so happy he's here. Love you so much. Can't wait to feel you kicking around today. Love you. Yes, you just made me fart and it stings. <laughs> and then my mom wrote, hi sweet grandson, it's grandma. Don't believe it when mommy tells you that you make her fart. That's all her. Be glad you're on the inside. <laughs> I saw your ultrasounds yesterday and you were so incredibly precious. Be ready because grandma's gonna kiss you all over and spend hours just gazing at your perfect she does. I want you to know that it's true that you are and will always be loved and cherished by grandma and my grandpa and myself and the entire family. Keep kicking mommy, keep snuggling close to her and kick extra hard when you hear her grandparents so we can feel you. Can't wait to see you and hold you up grandma. Oh my gosh. Hello little love, it's a month later and I'm a whole lot bigger now. You're getting so big. Last night we performed in Seattle to prep for the show in Washington DC next weekend. We are filming that show for the Netflix special and I am so nervous. Last night I almost fainted a few times on stage. That's a fun little symptom I've been having lately. Fainting. My body's working so hard to keep you safe and healthy that sometimes that just happens. I think you liked the show last night though because after it was over, you were rolling around and kicking harder than you ever have before. It made me so happy. I love you, love mommy. I love this journal. I did so much when I was pregnant with Lynn. It's so crazy. Oh my God, hello little love. You little stinker. Right after I wrote to you on that last page, I fainted and vomited and they made me get off the plane. I remember that was a horrible experience. Experience. Doctors and EMTs came on and made me and your dad wait at the Seattle airport for about eight hours before we got to come home. You're a nut already causing drama. Now I'm on a flight home from Washington DC where I filmed my Netflix comedy special at the Kennedy Center. I don't know how you did it, Kay, but you got through two shows and two meet and greets together. Oh my God. I mean, I only wrote for a little bit. I just kind of wrote while I was on tour and that's typically when I will journal is if I'm on tour or doing something like really big and exciting in my career is when I will journal. I'm really happy I did that. And I'm so excited that I just found this because that was really cool to read, knowing that like that girl who wrote this journal like did not know how awesome Flynn was gonna be and had knew nothing about him. And I hope that he like reads this someday and it's like, thinks it's cool. But now I feel like I need to do one for the twins. I feel like total failure that I have not done that yet. I'm having a really bad allergy attack, so I need to go. We just recorded the podcast. It was a mess. If you guys listen next week to the podcast, we're laughing hysterically. I'm crying. I'm sneezing. I'm messed up. But right now I'm dealing with the itchiest skin. Anyone who's been pregnant, you know this feeling where you're just like <laughs> I just want to itch all my skin off. For those of you who've never been pregnant, when skin stretches, it itches. 
so uncomfortable. So I'm just like, but it doesn't even feel good to itch it. Like, oh, nothing feels good. Oh man, we are coming close to the end of this pregnancy, guys. I think. Watch me say that and jinx it. I can just feel it. Like I'm like my body is just done. Like I am tired. Lovey, I think we gotta bust out the lotion. I'm itchy, 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 itchy. I'm itchy. The skin is so tight and stretching. I'm like, can you see? I've been itching it. Will you itch my belly for me? Would you say you? S That's too light. No, 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 no. Not a tickle. A scratch it. Can't scratch. Scratch it. I can't. Why is it all red? Because <laughs> I've been scratching it harder. I can't, <laughs> I can't scratch it harder. <laughs> Are you filming right now? Yes, of course. Look how big my tummy is. <laughs> nah, that's too light. I can't do it harder nah, than that. It's too light. That's nothing. It's time for tortilla top with Colleen. So it's gonna be short, guys. I need to go to bed. It's been a long day for my pregnant little body. But I, there were a couple questions I wanted to answer on here from my video yesterday. The comments were fun to read through. This is something I kind of wanted to address anyway, so I'm like glad someone brought it up. So yesterday in my vlog, I talked about during tortilla talk. Someone asked about my parents raised me conservative. I wasn't allowed to celebrate Halloween as a kid, but now I celebrate Halloween with my kids. And how do my parents feel about that? You can watch my explanation on everything in yesterday's vlog. But someone said, I never had any negative thoughts about your parents. It's always been very clear to me that your entire family has evolved tremendously since then. However, I still wonder if their views on Halloween, etc., have changed. Would they go trick-or-treating with Flynn? Yes. If so, what changed their minds? It's not that something changed their minds. I'll get to that. I sometimes feel like there's a disconnect between your childhood stories, which are very conservative, and what we see of your parents nowadays, really open and accepting, etc. I think a more in-depth explanation um, could shed some light on their journey. I can't speak for my parents, so I'm not gonna speak on their journey and their life, but I do wanna say this. Yes, I was raised very conservative and religious. You said in this comment, uh, there's a disconnect between your childhood stories, which are very conservative, and how your parents are now really open and accepting. It's not like they had this big shift and are like suddenly now they're nice, wonderful people. They've always been wonderful, loving, kind, accepting people. It is possible to be a conservative, religious person and also be kind and loving and open and accepting of all people. I actually um, only learned about like how hypocritical or hateful, honestly, judgmental some religions or churches can be, not from my family, but from experiences away from my family, like in different church settings or religious settings or whatever. So I actually know that it is possible to be religious and conservative and kind because I've seen it with my parents. So I was never angry with my parents or frustrated or felt cheated of anything because I love my parents and I knew it was all out of love and they were just trying to protect me. And we had lots of fun doing other stuff like making home videos instead of watching movies or doing crafts and you know, like we, we had fun doing other stuff. And it was never out of like, you can't do that because people who do that are bad people. It was just, we don't do that stuff and we're gonna do something else fun instead. So I remember on Halloween when year instead of going trick-or-treating we went bowling does that make sense i just don't want anyone to think that my parents were like these evil people when i was a kid and now they've changed and they've learned yes they've changed and grown just like i have changed and grown in my life because that's what people do but they've always been very loving and kind and accepting of all people do you know what i'm saying am i making any sense i could talk about that stuff forever but like i said this channel is for me to talk about my experiences and my feelings i'm not going to talk on someone else's journeys and experiences you know what i'm saying oh this is an interesting question and I don't know if I should answer it, but I'm going to. Natalie said, Tortilla Talk question, have you ever accidentally said a cuss word in front of Flynn and he repeated it? If so, how did you handle the situation? Yes. So I have a potty mouth. We usually try to edit our potty mouths around Flynn, but one time I was talking to Eric, Flynn was playing, he wasn't paying attention to us, or so I thought, but kids are always paying attention. And I said a bad word and Flynn repeated a bad word. And it was a very bad word. He said it and I looked at him and I was just like, <gasps> and I looked at Eric and I was like, oh my God, that was so weird here like bad word come out of my two-year-old's mouth. He didn't know it was a bad word. He didn't know the word. I just got down on his level and I explained to him, that's a bad word. We shouldn't say that word. And instead of saying, you said a bad word, you don't say that bad word. I said, that's a bad word. We shouldn't say that bad word. I am really sorry. I said that bad word. I shouldn't have said that. That's not a nice word. Will you forgive me? And I made it about, he was repeating me. So I'm not going to be like, you can't say that. Like I said it, you know, so I didn't act mad at him. I said that I did it and I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? me because that's not a nice word and he asked what the word was again and I told him and I said it's not a nice word we shouldn't say that and then he was like it's okay mommy it's okay and was like sweet and like comforted me because I made a mistake that's how I handled the situation I don't know if that's the right or wrong way it's just how I handled it in that moment I felt really stupid <laughs> okay now it's my turn to ask 
you guys a question because I need help slash advice from my C-section mamas out there. I don't know what's gonna happen with my babies. We are assuming at this point it's gonna be C-section. There's still a chance it could be a vaginal birth, but like it's not looking likely. C-sections are great and I'm so grateful that C-sections exist and that I can have one if I need to have one, which is looking like I will. I was talking to my friend today. I was telling her that I was nervous about a C-section and she said, what are you nervous about? And I said, I'm not nervous for the surgery. I'm not nervous something bad will happen to the babies or to me. It's just a new experience that scares me. But I think what's freaking me out the most, of the only thing I've ever experienced is a vaginal birth. And right after Flynn came out, he was put on my chest and immediately I had, I got to hold him. The second he came out of my body, I got to hold him, cuddle him, kiss him, talk to him, bond with him. And then, you know, they took him and weighed him and did all this stuff and then he came right back to me. But I got to have that immediate moment. Like that moment was very wonderful for me to birth Flynn, push him out of my body, be excited about that, be happy about that, not be pregnant anymore. Then I got to meet him immediately, cuddle with him. I mean, it was just so magical. It's like one of my favorite moments of my whole life. With a C-section, I've never had one, but what, from what it looks like, from what I've seen, they take out a baby and they're gonna show me a baby, baby A, which will be the boy, and then they take him away. And then they take out the girl and they show me the girl and they take her away and I don't get to have that. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I think that's what's freaking me out the most about it is that my babies are gonna be born and I don't get to immediately like hold them. I don't get to be the first person they meet when they come out. And I think it's freaking me out. <laughs> so I, I have a question for my strong, powerful, incredible C-section mamas out there. What was that experience like for you? What was the whole C-section experience like for you? What tips do you have for me? Um, what were the good moments, the hard moments? I just kind of want to be prepared for it and I don't want to be prepared like clinically for it. I don't want to like Google it or like talk to a doctor. I mean, I am going to talk to my doctor. I have talked to my doctor about it, but I want to hear from other women and people who've experienced this, who can tell me their firsthand experiences and their advice. I'm not that scared of the actual surgery. It is a little scary, but like I think it's going to go smoothly and I trust my doctors and all that. I think it's more just like that sounds really hard to be laying there on a table and see my babies for the first time and then they take them away. I'm so traumatic. <laughs> But I think that's what's freaking me out the most. Like that sounds really hard. And uh, especially if they're born super early and they have to go to the NICU or anything like that. I'm just like, oh my God, like there's so many things that I don't know. I've never experienced them. And so they're just kind of like freaking me out. So I'd love advice, tips, stories, anything from just other people who are incredible people who've experienced C-sections. And I just want to know what to expect and to know I'm not alone in it. That like a lot of people go through that. It's not like I think, by the way, I don't want anyone to misinterpret what I'm saying. It's not that I think that I won't get to bond with my babies or like they won't have a strong bond with me because of that. I know that's not true. I know that my babies and I will bond wonderfully when I finally get to hold them. It's just the idea that like I've been growing these babies for so long and I'm finally going to meet them. But how I meet them, it's like, there it is. <laughs> It's gonna be torture. It sounds like torture. So what's your experience? Especially if there's any twin mamas out there who've had C-sections, like please tell me about it in the comments. And if you guys see twin mamas talking about their experience, like like those comments so they get popped up to the top because I just need to know um, how to deal with that. Um, <laughs> you guys. I am ignorant when it comes to C-sections. And so if I said anything like that just sounded really ignorant, I hope I didn't. I hope, I just know that I'm learning and I want to learn how to talk about all birth experiences properly and I'm not out to offend or upset anyone. I, I want to learn and be better. I've just only ever experienced a natural as far as vaginal birth. So anyway, I've got to go. I'm talking too much. Good night. I love you guys. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.